Welcome to the Thrill of Driving podcast. Now, this podcast is a bit of a somber podcast because it's a serious one. It's a serious one because yeah. we're going to be talking about safety in the aftermath of the accident with Cyrus Mistry, where he expired. Unfortunately, we want to talk about safety in the Indian environment and in the Indian context of our roads, of our conditions, of our cars. What should be done? How do you improve the levels of safety? And what really needs to be taken care of? True. Now, as always, we've got Adil Jal Darukhanaula with us on the podcast. And Adil is going to be bringing his years of experience of driving in India. You've driven all over the country. You've driven all kinds of cars. You've seen all kinds of roads in the country and in all kinds of weather. And we're going to talk about this whole aspect of safety that... Unfortunately, only now it is really being talked about in the media, but it's something that is extremely important because we have the highest road yeah, fatalities absolutely. in the world. And we are the uncrowned champions of this road fatality thing for the last 15, 20 years. So why does it require the demise of a man like Cyrus Mystery to awaken us? One the 15, uh, 1,52,000 deaths last year, the year before... Aren't they enough to shake us up? So this is why I say so many things are there. And it's not just about the demise of Cyrus and his friend Pandol, who suddenly that thing has made headline news. The fact remains that there were so many incidents, poor road design, shoddy road design. How do you regulate traffic? What is the upkeep of our roads? What about traffic conditions? Also, and this is something which I hold against the two deceased persons, you shouldn't talk about that. But if they were belted up, this thing would not have happened. Yeah, so, so the it's first critical. thing first is safety. The individual's responsibility towards safety. Now, uh, everybody in the front now does wear a seatbelt. All cars have that alarm and that buzzing is irritating for most people. So everybody tends to wear the seatbelt in the front. But as of now, we still don't have the buzzers for the guys sitting at the back. In fact, even for the front, there are a lot of people who have those clips, those buckles that go It's, it's into stupid. The it's ridiculous. And most of them, the excuse is that we are just going for a short distance, only going one kilometer. So my shirt will get crushed or my shirt will get uh, creased and uh, soft. That's why people so don't wear helmets because their hairdo will get spoiled. Yeah, so it's I ridiculous. I want to cover that helmet part also. But safety, this starts with the seatbelt because no matter how strong your car is, and how many airbags it has. If you're not wearing your seatbelt... Seatbelt is the first line of defense in the car for the occupant. And uh, let me tell you this. Even though the uh, guys in the front two seats survived, they have got multiple injuries. How did those injuries happen? It's because uh, Cyrus and uh, Mr. Pandol became literally cannonballs which rammed into the back seats of uh, the back of the front seats causing a lot of harm over there both uh, the pandols in front were strapped up belted the airbags uh, it deflated as Deploy, it, yeah. everything yeah. everything happened well but the multiple injuries they got was from the cannonballs which uh, hurled into them i think the severity of this crash they say almost to the tune of about 40 G is when the thing. So an 80 kg person at 40 G, it's almost like an elephant ramming into you. So, yeah. so the fact is that uh, we've been, everybody's been talking about wearing seatbelts, whether you're sitting in the front, whether you're sitting at the back, whether you're sitting in the third row in an MPV sure. or an SUV. If you don't have your seatbelts on, nothing is going to save you. So please, please, please. You may have 20,000 airbags in the car. It's yeah. not going to save you. Yeah. A lot of times when you sit in a cab, you don't find the buckle to the seat because you know it's stuck inside and nobody is bothered asking. Correct. The, but just get your cab guy to stop, let him pull out the buckle and use the buckle and get belted up. The key thing uh, here is we, the authorities, do not implement what is legislated. And the fact of the matter is that you see so many times the police... Right in front of their eyes, it's what you call flagrant breach of all regulations. Blind eye. Sometimes if they are given a shock, they catch two, three persons, three functionally, just to see or show that they are doing their duty. 
this is not the way rules have to be employed where and, human lives are concerned and the reason why rules are so important and implementation is so important so adil and i are on one of these vintage car groups and yesterday one of the worthies on that group very proudly said that i have been alive for what, 60 years 70 years mm-hmm. and i've never worn a seat belt mm-hmm. and as if that's a matter of pride that is Absol- not a matter it's of not, pride it's not it's not it's just your luck that uh, no the gods are looking down sure, gracefully sure. at you it's not something to be proud of and he said that he was in america mm. and in america he wore the seat belt and why because the fines in america were very heavy <laughs> but over here how much is it i paid some 200 bucks a month and I, and i i'm happily been paying paying that thing but that is it's it's a, it shows it's, a, it's a death wish it is again i'm telling you it's this is the ingrained psyche of most indians is nothing will happen to me mm. it'll happen to mm. someone else you can't live your life like that because you may go away the if you get maimed you are going to what do you call trouble your family and the rest of them for a very very long time i think you owe it to them no one thinks about on those lines you know exactly so wear your seat belts and for the other guys on bikes wear your helmets helmets are technically compulsory right we live in no no the, the, the mantralaya has made it into a law Yeah. and so it's it's our compulsory so why is the traffic authority is not implementing it we are that is Pune. no on at a signal sure, stop sure, absolutely. maybe 3 out of 10 bikers are wearing a helmet okay forget the fact that they are isi or not isi or whatever that is a whole other degree yeah, yeah. but 3 out of 10 bikers are wearing a helmet at a traffic signal everybody else is not wearing a helmet then you have rampant flagrant violation of laws three people sitting together on a scooter uh, guys coming on the wrong side and now especially with all this delivery apps and absolutely all, guys are they, one hand the phone yes. are they looking at maps or looking at and they have got deadlines to match yeah pizza hut says we'll deliver in 20 minutes this that 21 minutes they'll have to I think these are really uh, recipes for disaster you know so it's to their families it's to the families of the other people on the road is just absolute chaos today nobody is giving a damn about the other person shirish uh, key things uh, like i said for us or for anyone it starts with the individual when he gets onto a motorcycle or he gets into a car he has to either strap up his helmet or he has to belt up in the car how do you get this thing going because there is so many people who are so well versed in the art of not doing this thing mm. that they don't care so this has to be taught from a primary school level ingrain into them about behavior on roads and to be safe on roads is there a thing going there i don't think so uh given the way we give our licenses well something has been tightened up to a certain extent but this is more the exception than the rule because rural india you go to you can get your license delivered to you at home without even having driven a car or uh, ridden a bike so it is really pathetic on that front so it is time our authorities also woke up to the severity of it because it is their vote bank and their vote bank is shrinking right no their vote bank says don't do this because we'd like to we want to in india we have attained freedom 75 years of freedom we don't want to do a, do anything to do something for our rights we want to be free to do anything that is unfortunate unfortunate and this has to be legislated strongly the police the traffic authorities they can make a lot of money right by stopping all the guys on the road who are not wearing yeah. seatbelts it's good for their coffers but the thing is that where has any political will come across over there trust me Uh, i've always said now this again think for another debate police should not be under the executive in that sense police should be independent mm-hmm. police is not independent police has been what you call made through where the british policies of subjugation those same policies have remained but okay that's a different debate but here in india uh, i uh, so on this uh, unfortunate accident yesterday i read in one of the papers saying that the policeman on the spot said the impact was so severe that the radiator was 3 feet uh, behind the car the fact remains that policeman is ignorant of how cars are built today because having studied the photographs and what not the passenger cell of the glc is intact mm. the doors open and shut it they did his job the impact dissipation was perfect the engine submarine down and below it didn't enter the uh, passenger cell so what i'm saying is 
you cannot have ignorant people yes the policeman is doing his job but he is not doesn't understand that the radiator is supposed to what you call break off and go down below the engine mounts are supposed to what you call work in such a manner that the engine instead of going this way into the cabin it goes down below so key thing is that these sort of things happen then the clamor from the media again not enough domain knowledge not e- enough to think about and said oh if he had more airbags he would have been safe no it's without a seat belt seat belt is first the airbag comes second exactly yeah so the key thing is that and then suddenly given the way our indian uh, mind functions make a representation to nidin gadkari and to say across over there tell him to make 20 airbags compulsory in cars it's not going to work it's not going to work if you are not belted up exactly so if an alto tomorrow gets six airbags okay it is a great move it'll increase the cost number yeah. one it'll reduce the number of people who are graduating from motorcycles to cars true okay it'll make a uh, affordability of cars more expensive and if you're not wearing a seat belt at the back all the airbags in the world they're not going they're to not going to help uh, in fact i checked with a senior engineering head today hmm. whether the deployment of the curtain airbags is dependent on the person actually wearing a seat belt at the back and he said no it is all basis the impact sensors on absolutely the absolutely so curtain bags will deploy but then if you're not wearing a seat belt you're going to smash your face into the back of the front seat so, so that really won't help w- you what i'm saying is that there are so many active and passive safety uh, aspects already designed engineered and built into the cars today but they all are linked to so many other in uh, bits in the piece of, and it's like it's for you to start how you sit behind the wheel is as important as anything else as well but that is for a different uh, subject and a debate but i think that uh, the role of the police and the media is okay they have reported only report don't what you call give your opinions because i think that uh, they are bereft of the knowledge over there one worthy said that the car did 21 kilometers in 9 minutes mm. yes how did they come to know yeah. about that exactly yeah. so so i, w- I w- means if we have got that mechanism then we will definitely make a lot more headway towards safety in our country but how did you make that statement exactly now also the other fact is that whenever you read in the newspapers hmm. Hmm. of any incident unfortunate incident that happens everything is that this was speeding that was speeding but when we've been on the road nobody is going very few people are actually going above 80 100 because everybody is so obsessed with shirish shirish this is you know one thing where in our you know, Uh, in bombay uh, husband wife couple on a scooter uh, fell on a pothole in andheri and a truck went over them the deceased couple was chalan saying they were going uh, 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 what do you call irresponsible driving how does that become irresponsible mm. can we now get into ambit people like the municipal authorities pwd road contractors whosoever is that can we now what do you call start putting them as accomplices towards manslaughter it may not be murder but it's manslaughter can we what do you call get that can we have the corporator of that place the collector or whosoever the ward officer it's can we make them responsible as accessories to the crime i think we have gone away we have neglected those chali boys and if they if, if they had done their jobs these potholes etc would not have happened yeah, and also let us not forget sorry to say this but a lot of politicos are corrupt the amount of money which goes in roads and what not to do lipstick jobs the road surface would be brilliant but if it is not engineered well and that stretch of road i have been on umpteen times from a three lane road suddenly it constricts into a two lane then from there it goes into another two two lanes because there are two bridges then again it funnels into one three it is a mess so unless and until you are a very good driver and who you also come across a crest of a hill and you come down so it's there is too many things which happen and i think that i don't understand there have been uh, crashes over there only now they say oh we'll now term it as a black spot on the road this is ridiculous
Yeah, and there is no reason for the roads to deteriorate the way they do in our country. True. That whole Bombay Ahmedabad section, it's become a nightmare now. It's got massive potholes because of the rains. Okay, we've had severe rains, but there are severe rains all over the world. All over the world. It's only in yeah. our country the roads disintegrate, completely get washed up. There is road construction techniques which you know the world over people use. The budgets are made for the best road purpose uh, construction techniques. A lot of the budget goes into God knows where, excepting the roads. Exactly. And so that's where we find we, ourselves across over there. We need a movement where, like you said, these authorities are also held culpable. Absolutely. They have to be. They have to. I remember some years ago uh, when uh, the expressway happened, uh, was inaugurated in Pune. And when I was at Odra and we had written across. The exit from the expressway into Pune is the worst the sort right of hander. the right hander is the improperly engineered designed exit at all. And there were so many accidents which have happened there. Signages on our roads. You go to any toll booth, you go to the Bombay uh, Washi Road Bridge. Is there signage for that thing? Suddenly you see cones across over there. Mm. It is poor. It is poor in every sense. And we accept it. The day we stop accepting it, everyone is going to be under the scanner. From the politician to the guy over there down below. Exactly. We need to stop accepting yes. it. We need yeah. to stop having this... Uh, Status quo, you know. Lackadaisical yeah. or uh, okay, chalta hai attitude yeah. towards this. Because if this does not stop today, it could be somebody that we know, somebody in our family or us itself. What I'm saying, uh, my wife always tells me, Adil, you may know how to drive, but the rest of the road users don't know how to drive. Mm. So you are a sitting duck. Mm. So this whole thing about speeding, it's not really speeding, speeding. Speeding is not really... If it was speeding, Shirish, look at the low, slow slumbering trucks on the expressway. How much of a danger they are. Exactly. Okay. And... Uh, we have got wrong notions in our road. They say in town, we say maintain lane discipline. I agree. You cannot have the same thing, maintain discipline on the expressway. If you have to overtake, you have to overtake. I was taught to overtake always on the right. I was not told to overtake on the left. I, was, I learned it. But here, it's free for all. Because the trucker is there on the middle lane and the fast lane. So where do we overtake Where from? do the cars go? Where do the cars go? The police turn a blind eye to that. Second thing, there's not enough policemen over there. Mm. Look at the amount of policemen given or for a minister's convoy. A bandobast. Bandobast and convoy. Man, if he's so powerful and he's so popular, he should not need those, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is these are the things where we need to what you call draw a line. Exactly. And also, we need to talk about how our cars are built. Now, like you said, everybody's clamoring for <laughs> having six airbags in the car. But fact also is that the cars have been... So, why is it called a crumple zone, for instance? A crumple zone is called a crumple zone because in an impact, it crumples. So, when you look at a car that has been in an accident, it does look quite uh, uh, quite terrible to look at it. So at least the front like, end. Yeah, the front end. It looks like it's gone through the walls. But and the whole exactly. thing is that the car has been designed Absolutely. to crumple. The crumple zone actually absorbs the impact. No, it dissipates that and transfers the forces away from the passenger cabin. That is its job. Hmm. And that is what has happened in this uh, incident as well. And the fact is that our cars are getting better and better. Sure, they are getting sure, preferences. sure. Okay, they might be getting lighter. But that, I don't think, comes at the expense of safety. No, they don't. No, now, no one. No, there's no compromise there here. Yeah. Hmm. There's no compromise there. And now with the Bharat NCAP that is due to come. Cars will definitely get more safe. So, cars are, it's okay. Cars are strong. What we have to talk about is our responsibility when we are in the car. That, that, unfortunately, this has been a big takeaway on this front. Cyrus was a car guy. I knew him personally. I knew what he did when we had this Tata uh, geared for great thing. For me to comprehend that he was not built it up means that has shook me, shaken me much more than anything else. Yeah. So what mm. we want to really highlight on this podcast, and this is going to be a short podcast, mm. but we just want to highlight the fact that 
we need to take responsibility for ourselves that is number one nobody else is going to protect you you have to take responsibility and you have to let the car do its job all the safety features that are there in the car let it do its job and you can let it do its job by number one belting up and number two being more aware of what is happening around you um, like like adil said there are times when you can't but help overtake from the left because the truck is not let you going to overtake going to let you overtake from the right yeah. but you have to be a little bit more careful because in india the unpredictability is yes. just very very high absolutely uh, i also say one thing across over there speeding if you crash from a motorcycle at 10 km per hour also without a helmet it will crack your skull mm. so please don't say that speeding will slow speeds will also kill you uh high speeds will also kill you exactly from But, 40 km yeah. per hour if you hit a wall yeah. the impact is going to be horrible absolutely so it's not absolutely. like you're going 40 so 40 yeah. is a slow speed yeah no no not at all because if you come to a dead stop from 40 oh, it's going to really really hurt i was reading in today's paper that cyrus misri's uh, autopsy said that he had a lot of head injury and it's it goes no exactly to what has been done in the crashes and all that the person behind is hurled so his head will either hit the back of the front seat or it will hit the uh, windscreen and if you see there is an impact on the windscreen where is there so what i'm saying is for heaven's sake don't say that oh because i'm in the rear seat i'm safe you are you are not just safe you are also killer material for the guys in up front you know uh, we also had a lot of questions whether the front seat is safer than the back seat because the people in the front seat survive i think both the seats are equally safe absolutely uh, now in, in time we will also start seeing airbags for the guys at the back mercedes on their s class they already introduced it so that will trickle down to the more affordable cars that you and me buy so that will happen but it will obviously take time but i don't think there's any difference in the safety when no. you're sitting in front or this is progress you know this is progress this thing sort of things happen but all progress will be nullified if you're not belted up simple exactly. as that yeah so everything will be nullified in even in the airplanes when you go and when that first uh, uh, announcements are there safety are related say in case the aircraft loses pressure oxygen mask mm-hmm. come down it says very clearly you first wear your air mask the oxygen mask and then help an oldie or a child sitting yeah. next to you if you do not have that same thought process percolate down to building up at the rear and it has to start from a very early age exactly so education is important you have to be responsible and of course we need to push our authorities to start taking more responsibility and to hold them responsible for the kind of rubbish that we are doled out in terms of our road construction in terms of the safety on the road in terms of the traffic movement in terms of the enforcement i uh, read again today that uh, the authorities had done a green corridor to get the two injured front seat occupants to bombay from wapi and they had a green corridor they did that wonderfully well india is the only place in the world even pakistan has got a separate lane for ambulances mm-hmm. and what not if god forbid something happens to anyone and an ambulance has to go that man or that person might not reach the hospital in time there are so many things and we are we cannot be living in a age of mythology that saying that i have got 9 lives mm. 10 lives 15 lives this sort of thing is absolute bullshit you know rubbish across over there you have to what do you call get beyond this it got to get real got to get safe safety is unfortunately a uh, vital missing link in a big quantum in india exactly and if you have any thoughts suggestions on how road safety can be improved in india how we can reverse this horrible statistic of india having the highest number of road accidents let us know in the comments below and also how can we make this into a movement that actually results in genuine change that we can see on our road let us know in the comments and we are going to push this agenda it's not us trying to mm-hmm. you know jump on to the no, no way right now it's us trying to you know push this thought that safety the, the, starts the, with you sure is the key thing again like i repeat myself it didn't need the death of two eminent personalities for such a thing to be uh, what you call highlighted we had enough and more rear seat accidents which have happened in the 152000 deaths we have got last year there 
no one gave a damn it's because unfortunately this sort of thing happened with cyrus mystery over there i knew cyrus was a very good human being so in an oblique manner if his uh, passing away in such tragic conditions helps to bring or sh- throw more light as to what we can do to improve safety in an oblique manner he would have still done quite a lot for yeah this moment, uh, you know? we also have to offer our condolences absolutely. to the family and to the friends absolutely um, there's no two ways about it's it it's a horrible thing to have happened and he, you wouldn't wish this on anybody no it's way terrible. no way and every it's like the pandols uh, three of them from the same family yeah. two survived uh, cyrus also who has been one of the most promising of uh, industry leaders in the country young young comparatively given everything i think that this thing was avoidable and uh, well we pray for them and i hope that this no family goes through such a thing ever again anyway thank you adil for being on the podcast and thank you for listening and watching if you have any thoughts comments please let us know in the comments and we will do our best to raise our voice i need to what you call again button for before we please. close off most important thing we talk about safety the safest cars on indian roads for the common people are done by two indian companies tata motors and mahindra mm. their cars have got five star and four star ratings mm. on crash safety maruti hyundai kia whoever is there are sadly followers there mm. they are lacking there so think about it don't shun indian cars they will save you 9 times out of 10 but again only if you are belted up only if you are belted up so whether you are front seat back seat please stay belted uh, please wear a helmet please instruct all your friends your family the delivery guys who come to you just keep hammering that thought subject into their heads that exactly. you have to wear a helmet helmet is your first line of be defense. a pest over there be a pest okay but ensure that they should belt up in the wherever they sit in a car and wear a helmet yes. all through absolutely so anyway thank you guys for watching as always your comments your thoughts let us know and we will try and move this topic on safety forward. absolutely hopefully this will mark a turning point in the conditions True. on our roads thanks adil once again and thank you for listening and watching